Welcome to lesson A3. Let's get started talking about series versus parallel circuits. In this video, we'll be focusing on understanding the differences between series and parallel circuits. All right, as you saw in lesson A2, a circuit can be as simple as powering a single LED. However, in the real world, that's not a very useful application. You will generally see multiple components being powered by a single battery. For example, a remote control contains numerous switches, LEDs, and other components all powered from a single battery. Now, how is that possible? At the end of lesson A2, we talked about forward voltage and how anything more than a very simple circuit would require a very big battery when all of those components are along one path running from the battery's positive charge to the negative charge. In this lesson, though, you will learn how to get around that pesky problem with forward voltage as we dig into the differences between series and parallel circuits and teach you how to power multiple component paths using a single battery. This circuit probably looks familiar. In the last lesson, you built a similar circuit. That circuit had a single path that ran from the anode of the battery through a resistor, through an LED, and then back to the cathode or the negative of the battery. This is known as a series circuit, one path of components running off the source battery. All right, but most projects or real life applications like that remote control would run in what's known as a parallel circuit. When running in parallel, the current runs from the positive terminal of the battery, splits along multiple paths to power components, and then runs back to the negative terminal of the battery. As we talked about in lesson A2, because of forward voltage, there are some significant limitations to running serial circuits, mainly that you would need a high voltage battery to run anything more than a few simple components. Instead, circuits are normally run in parallel, which allows the battery voltage to feed equally to all paths within the circuit. So looking at the image on the left, a three volt battery will provide three volts of power to each resistor LED set. Therefore, running circuits in parallel essentially makes the full battery voltage available across multiple paths. Now, on the right-hand side, you see a schematic drawing of the same parallel circuit. Electrical schematics are common, and knowing how to read them comes in handy when you find projects online. We'll teach you to read electrical schematics in Lesson A8, but for now, this is just an example so you can get used to seeing them. All right, this example parallel circuit has 11 different branches, each with its own LED and resistor, all powered off one battery. Using parallel circuits to power multiple branches is convenient. However, you must be careful to control current flow through each branch using a resistor. Any one resistor will only control current flowing through that branch of the circuit with that LED. If a branch has an LED but no resistor, the LED could burn out due to excess current. Okay, before you move on to the next video, let's take a few moments and review the concepts we just discussed. First, series circuits are the simple circuits you built back in lesson A2. They consist of a single path from the positive charge of the battery, known as the battery anode, through the components onto the negative charge of the battery, known as the battery's cathode. Most projects you would build or electronic equipment you use in everyday life is built as a parallel circuit. Parallel circuits have multiple paths from the battery anode to the battery cathode, and the current passes through each branch equally, powering each branch. Because each branch receives equal current, it's critical that every branch contain a resistor to slow the flow of the current to the LED and battery. All right, well, now that you understand the difference between series and parallel circuits, go ahead and move on to the next video to learn about Ohm's law, the mathematical formula that will help us figure out what size resistor each branch of our parallel circuit needs.